everybody, we got this breaking story from Louder with Crowder. I've not yet read it. Uh, this show is live, and this was uh, sent to me in our Super Chats while we were live streaming. So we're going to go through the story. I'm going to read it in real time with you guys. Lawfare against Trump. DOJ chief of public fair alleges, quote, it's a perversion of justice. Wow. Take a look at this. Loud with Crowder's Mug Club undercover unit released a new video today exposing the political lawfare President Trump has faced over the last 18 months. Nicholas Bias, uh, Biasse, a senior official at the U.S. Department of Justice, Southern District of New York, explained what he calls a perversion of justice led by Manhattan District Attorney Alvin Bragg to hurt the current Republican nominee's chance in the 2024 presidential election. He was stacking charges and like rearranging things just to make it fit a case. No, honestly, I think the case against Trump and NYC is nonsense. Every real estate person in New York does what Trump did. Nobody's ever been charged with this. It's all it's all him. That's why, like, he's surging in the polls. You know, it's a perversion of justice. Wow. Do they have the actual video here? They do. Let's uh, let's. Oh, so this is. Oh, this is the video. Stacking charges and like, rearranging things just to make it fit a case. Make the case is nonsense. To wow. To make him a convict, a convicted felon. They will fax his scat and say that he's a convicted felon. It's a travesty of justice, a mockery of justice. Is that Alvin Bragg's choice to do that? Or? Why? Because Alvin's very ambitious. What do you mean? He wants to be, um, you know, something. I don't know what. A mayor. I, I'm not sure what he wants to be, but I know he's not happy just being the DA. This is crazy. This is the Southern District of Southern District of New York DOJ Public Affairs, an undercover camera stating. That Donald Trump is the victim of legal lawfare with an unjust case. This is huge. Holy crap. Wow. The point of prosecuting Trump was to make him into a convict. It affects his candidacy if he's a convicted felon. The SDNY spokesman wanted to explain just how well he knows Alvin Bragg. He also details why he believes Bragg moved forward with indicting Trump. Before he decided to prosecute Trump, did you know who he was? You do now, Alvin Bragg, who I've known for 15 years, who used to work in my office. Alvin is very ambitious. I used to work with him for 10 years. I mean, we know each other really well, but like, do I respect what he's doing? No. The U.S. Department of Justice chief of public affairs agreed with the Mug Club undercover journalist that President Trump was undergoing a process of political lawfare where Trump's Democrat political opponents are using the judicial system to affect electoral results. The assay cited the Fulton County, Georgia prosecutor, Fonnie Willis, as a prime example of an unethical prosecutor. The Fonnie Willis case in Fulton County, Georgia, is a travesty of justice. To put it mildly, it's a mockery of justice. She is a joke. The whole thing is disgusting. They're just out to get him. The senior DOJ official said Americans will not vote for a criminal. The Democrat machine, the swamp and bad actors have falsely made Trump out to be a criminal. This revolution revelation proves that Trump is no criminal. Let's uh, we'll, we'll play more from this uh, clip. New York County. So this is like before he decided to prosecute Trump. Did you know who he was? You do now. What was the point of even doing it then? To make him a convict. To make him what? A convicted felon. What if he can still run for presidency and? Yeah, but it affects his candidacy if he's a convicted felon. I was trying to count the losses. I was like, I wonder like how many are against him. I think it's called lawfare. Yes. That's what I have gathered from that. That is what they call it. So uh, how does this even happen? How can it happen? How can the local and state level courts try President Trump with more ease and less red tape than the federal courts. That doesn't seem right to the uninitiated, but you are the uninitiated. Good thing uh, Biasi isn't. I mean, at the federal level where I work, there is a 90-day rule where you can't make any decisions on cases that are going to affect an election. 
that rule does not apply at the state level because the state level is like wild west. They're like idiots. They don't care. They're all political. Um, so yeah, this guy's probably going to try to lock them up. And there is going to be it's going to be ugly. They're so obsessed with getting here. Wow. different system, like the state level and the federal level are like night and day. Um, Seems like a good dude. <laughs> I like this Nicholas guy. There are so many more rules in the federal level and they're, they're, like the threshold for a crime is so much higher. Um, like I said, it, like the state level is like the wild west of law. It's like very, um, for lack of a better term, unregulated. Wow. Less checks and balances. And I know, I, I, I know what you're thinking. I thought it too. Well, you're talking about one case or two or 19. Hey, if it's, if it's local, you, you break the rules, you pay the piper, or even if you don't, you... President Trump pay the piper. But there are other cases in the country. There are a lot of them. Where there's smoke, there's fire, right? What, what about the, the Georgia electoral interference case, right, that Donald Trump is currently having to face? I mean, he, Fannie he, Willis, right? The Fulton County District Attorney, who was. He says Fannie Willis is another example of this. Having an affair with the. Wow. Main squeeze. I mean, special. Prosecutor Nathan Wade. <laughs> so is that the strategy against Trump? Just hit him with all the legal battles all across, like the 100%. the Fannie, Will Fannie Willis Georgia stuff. What do you think about that case? It's a travesty of justice. Wow. To put it I like this guy. Of she is a joke. Like her and her. And this stuff breaks my heart. The whole thing is disgusting. I guess at this point, the only argument left is why should you trust anything Biasi has to say? Let me make the case. Biasi is an expert. He has firsthand knowledge and experience. And despite how the media is going to try and spin this, he is kind of an authoritative voice as the chief of public affairs for the Department of Justice's Southern District of New York. This man knows the players. He knows the game. And he knows. He sets the public rigged. narrative for the department. Oh, bad, yeah. mm -hmm. I, I've known him for 15 years. Mm -hmm. He used to work in my office. Mm -hmm. So here's us. Here's Alvin. As chief of public affairs, this means that when it comes to what is being disseminated to the public, it's his job. So when he gets information, he's the guy who's going to be like, here's what we're releasing as it pertains to the Southern District of New York. This breaks my heart. I mean, we know it's true. The, the lawfare against Donald Trump. But breaks my heart is I grew up watching the X-Files. And as a kid, I believed in this really great organization called the FBI. And it's kind of naive, right? Because we know if you go way back in time, the FBI has not done great things. But as a kid, uh, you see these movies, you see TV shows, and the FBI is the good guys. But now there's a lot of bad guys in the FBI. And we know there's bad guys in the FBI. They're not all bad guys. This guy at the DOJ seems like a good dude. He's, he's sitting here pissed off about a travesty of justice and how it besmirches their good name. But don't let's come on. We got the, the, the feds going after Donald Trump in the documents case while ignoring Joe Biden. So what are we supposed to say about that? Let me tell you guys a story because I've, I've said this quite a bit, but there's a couple people that I've met who are former and current uh, intelligence. We've actually had many of the former intelligence on the show and uh, they've pushed back on some of the narratives, but they tend to be, you know, more so on the populist side. But I remember I met with uh, an intelligence guy a while ago. I had dinner with him. Active intelligence. Active U.S. intelligence. And I uh, saw his badge and everything. And he was like, uh, he was a Trump supporter. He was a big fan. And uh, he said, the problem is it's the same on the inside as it is on the outside. You've got these like liberal leftists, adamant, angry activist types, pro-Democrat, Trump is evil. 
And the people on the right who support Trump are scared to speak up because they don't want to get fired or lose their jobs. It's the same thing. It's just in law enforcement. And so not to say he told me how many of the FBI were good or bad, but I think it's fair to say, and, and this is true, I know this is true, that there are good people who are working in law enforcement every single day. That includes intelligence agencies, 100%. And that's what breaks my heart. When I see this guy at the DOJ, and he's telling the truth, he's speaking candidly to this woman about how there's an injustice against Donald Trump. And this is, this is a month ago that this video appears to be. A travesty of justice at the state level. He knows what is right and what is wrong, and he is speaking it to a person. I hope this guy does the right thing. I hope he does good things. The problem is people are scared. So when they're in private and they say things like what's going on is wrong and all that stuff, what are they doing publicly to stop it? Because all that is required for evil to triumph is that good men do nothing. So I say to this guy, Nicholas Biase, who clearly is in his expression, showing himself to be a good guy, calling out injustice. My question is, what are you doing to stop it? You know, not everybody is made for the kitchen. Some people can't take the heat and they hide. But if that's you, maybe you shouldn't be in this position. As chief of public affairs for the U.S. Department of Justice at SDNY, you are in New York. You worked with Bragg. You know this guy. I understand it may be out of line if your department is speaking about legal matters outside your jurisdiction. But in any instance where you can, you should absolutely be, be rejecting these things. Maybe in a personal capacity at the very least. I understand why, why the, you, the DOJ, uh, the U.S. Department of Justice for the Southern District of New York is not going to, as a department, issue a statement about injustices against Trump, but certainly you as an individual could. Don't make the argument, yeah, but that would be a conflict of interest and I can't do that. I work here. No, you have an individual right to say these things. And you can say, I, I do, in my statement, I do not represent the, the, the Department of Justice, but in my expertise and capacity, I say these are wrong. These charges are wrong and, and someone's got to do it. You know, forgive me if I don't hold the FBI in the highest esteem. We were swatted something like 17, I don't know, was it like 13, I think 13 times. And uh, we didn't get any accountability. We, we, we had reached out. We had tried talking with law enforcement. Local law enforcement was fantastic. But nothing. We're, I'm, only, I'm only ever told by a journalist that they caught the guy who did it. There's no, there's no evidence it was him. There's no, the, the, the story makes no sense. The guy they claimed to have caught None of it explains how he had access to private information that didn't exist in the public sphere. They said it was him. And I'm like, it doesn't make sense. And some might say, well, he was hacking. No, the, the information, some of the information was obfuscated, was, was only transmitted verbally. I'm not going to say what it was, but it's nothing consequential, but it was utilized against us. So I'll give you an example. When it comes to security, let's say you get a, a bomb threat. And uh, the person's, it's, it's generic, you know. They could call and say, we think it's a hoax. You can forget about it. But let's say you went to the grocery store and you bought uh, you bought two large tubs of sour cream, like those big buckets, like restaurant size. Let's say you bought two big buckets and then you get a call from somebody who says, I followed you into your home just after you or, or into your office as you carried those large buckets of sour cream. And then they make a bomb threat. Now you have a more credible claim, which which requires not always the argument being this person should have no should, should not have access to that generic information. Uh, the sour cream thing is probably silly, but let's say like you walked out of the office. Let, let, let's say you went inside your office and then you opened your fridge and grabbed a bowl of old spaghetti and or you made you made a bowl of spaghetti and then someone called in a threat saying, I watched you make the spaghetti. The question is, how did they get in? How did they get access? How do they know this? It implies they were in the building or may have been. It makes it a more credible threat. So when we were getting swatted, there were some instances like this where it's information unrelated to anything that would be on the Internet or the show that one of the swatters knew, which indicated an inside job to an extent. And uh, it, it, it indicated not, I, I shouldn't call it an inside job. We know it, we know it wasn't someone here, but it indicated somehow access, which we believed we had evidence we had evidence we could share, and we got we got nothing. 
They never investigated it. They never explained it. So I don't trust it. They, the, the priorities of the FBI are limited. Staffing is not that big. I, I want to believe that there are good people there that are going to do the right thing. But I don't understand how we can have SDNY's chief of public affairs outright saying that Trump is being persecuted and prosecuted. And there's no one else to speak up. There's no FBI agent to come out and be like, this is wrong. This country is in trouble. What is this? Why does this guy know these things? He's in New York. How does he know these things? I mean, morally know them. And he's doing nothing. That breaks my heart, man. No, he's in county level. And he decided to do the case. Yeah. And Michael Cohen is mm -hmm. their star witness who we prosecuted. Okay. You know who he is? Mm -hmm. That guy's a psycho. He mm -hmm. calls me. <laughs> and he records What does he want with you? He's like, he's got this thick New York accent. He's like, oh, is this Nicholas Biagi, the chief of uh, public affairs? And I'm like, yeah, this is me. He's like, this is Michael Cohen. Why won't you guys, um, <laughs> like, um, vacate my conviction. I'm like, uh, I can't really, I, I'm not authorized to speak to victims or defendants, mm -hmm. which I thought was a pretty good answer, not knowing who was calling. And he was like, well, who can he speak to? And I was like, the media. And he goes, I have one of the biggest podcasts in the world. Like, <laughs> but I kind of didn't believe him. Yeah. And I was like, well, you're still a defendant, and that precludes me from talking to you. I've known Alvin for 15 years. Like, how well do you know him? I used to work with him for 10 years. All right, so I was just saying a lot of the same thing here. No. And November 5th, 2024, the election live from the century. And that night, wouldn't it be nice if on that night you didn't see the same tactics that you now know? have been going on for the years leading up to it. Shout out to Steven Crowder and uh, his investigative journalists and their team. Um, man, uh, I like this this Nicholas Piazza guy. I don't know a lot about him. I mean, maybe there's stuff about him that I wouldn't like, I guess. But uh, he seems like he's, he's, he's a good dude. We need people like this to be brave and defend what justice is supposed to be. I hope that guy does. And uh, just based off of this, all I can say is I wish him well. I do. I hope he's, he comes forward and he speaks up and he says, this is wrong. Man, I'll leave it there. Again, shout out to Steven Crowder. Follow me on X at TimCast. Uh, go to TimCast.com. Click join us, become a member. And uh, we'll be back tonight at 8 p.m. Don't miss the show. YouTube.com slash TimCastIRL. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll see you all then.